What better way to celebrate such a festive day as St. Patrick's Day than taking a look at the grim specter of death to come? Let's talk about Banshees. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center. Banshees are female spirits from Ireland, known for wailing when someone is going to die, and hanging around burial mounds. Fun, right? That's why we're going to reimagine them through speculative biology. So please consider wailing on those like and subscribe buttons if you like this video. And now, without further ado, let's get started. Belief in the fair folk, the supernatural beings that dwell beyond the veil of our reality, has been rather common throughout the world, and it's easy to see why. Many beings all across the planet have inspired such myths and legends, ranging from the earthly to those that defy explanation, beings scarcely more explainable than the myths they inspired. The latter of these we shall meet at a later date when more information about them is available. For now, let's see one of the more approachable of the fair folk, Tumulavis nudifacians, or the Banshee. These large birds, nearing the height of a human being, are found in Great Britain and surrounding islands, being most common in Ireland, with closely related species found mainly in Scotland. Banshees are strict carnivores, and are most usually found near bodies of water, especially rivers and bogs, where they will stand idly by, catching small aquatic prey with a quick movement from their long neck, their dense, oily plumage helping disguise them both from prey and predator. The presence of highly reflective feathers found across their body helps them in this purpose, further disguising them and blurring their outline. This has even led to banshees being contradictorily described as being white and dark grey in color, a result of the differing appearance of their feathers depending on light conditions. Despite being able to hunt, most of their nutrient uptake comes from carrion. They will tear off flesh from carcasses using their sharp claws and strong beak, and their face and neck are bare to prevent pieces of food from being stuck to their plumage. Whatever residues are left, the banshees will clean by dipping their beaks into the water. When they have fed on fresher corpses, the blood of their meal can be seen staining the water as they wash themselves. In an interesting case of anthropomorphization, a lot has been written about the way banshees weep and well as if preyed on by an unrelenting sorrow. While this impression is easy to understand, it is actually based on a couple unrelated things. First, the wailing itself is actually the way these birds communicate with one another, be it for mating, social or territorial purposes. The banshees are capable of producing a wide variety of calls, all of which share the same melancholic tone, and tend to communicate in a repeating pattern, which has been compared to keening, a traditional, repeating lament for the death in Ireland. As for the weeping itself, it is actually tied to the release of fluid from the Hardarian gland, located near the eyes. Of course, the bright red hue of this bird's eyes does help this impression a lot. This fluid contains a large amount of pheromones, and its release will indicate to other members of the species that the individual is ready to mate and fight for territory. These displays include the raising of bright red hackles, used to signal the individual's strength and good health, and these hackles have often been confused with flowing hair when these birds are half seen in the dark, with their tendency to print them constantly certainly lending credence to said impression. Once a pair has mated, the female will lay one or two eggs, which will be buried in a small nest at ground level, and the parents will keep a keen eye on the nest as they hunt and feed. The tiny newborns will have to stay well away from the water until they have developed the isolating plumage of their parents, 
and in the meantime will be easy prey to any predator in the area, depending on their cries to alert their parents. Unfortunately, the same places frequented by these birds also happened to be of interest to settles in the area due to the presence of peat, which was useful as fuel and fertilizer. Due to this, many old families settled in Banshee territories, having access to this valuable resource, but having to deal with the near constant wailing of Banshees as a result. Of course, the presence of food and garbage inside and around the houses would only make them more attractive to the Banshees. Worst of all, being scavengers, the Banshee would quickly identify if a member of the family living in the house was ill or old, and these birds would begin congregating around the household in ever-increasing numbers. Unbeknownst to them, their presence alone would be enough to not only foretell, but actively bring about the death of the prey they coveted. While in past centuries this was thought to be a result of supernatural powers, modern medical knowledge can give us a better explanation. The constant wailing of these birds, especially in the middle of the night, would quickly cause sleep deficiency, increasing the levels of stress and anxiety and often leading to cardiac problems. Altogether, this would highly increase the chances of a rather quick and seemingly unexpected death even for healthy members of the household. While human funerary rites prevent the banshees from reaching the corpses they have so long waited for, they will still lurk around graveyards and burial mounds, attracted by the smell of the deceased. And that's it for Speculative Biology Look into Banshees. What better way to celebrate St. Patrick's Day than another Irish being? These have been suggested a couple of times, and the idea of an avian inspiration has been common in many of these. There were some alternate ideas too in our Patreon exclusive Discord, please join, such as apes, and while I loved those ideas, the avian banshee really clicked for me with the reimagining being similar to the witches we saw in another episode, but I still tried to give them their own independent look and feel. Another particular aspect that made me lean towards birds is the fact that sometimes the banshee have been reported as being very short, up to a foot tall, and looking very old and frail. And I don't know about you, but that immediately made me think of baby birds. I also did my best to give this one a really creepy look that befit the subject matter, because March is as good of a month as any to begin Halloween season. I really hope y'all enjoyed this episode, and before we leave, why don't we take a look at some of our community's art. Here's a look at one of the old drinkers from our World of Metal project, beautifully rendered by Shattered Reality. And we also have Goku a mix of our own spec EVO version and the canon animated one, drawn by L. Mike 9 and commissioned by Jackson Younger. And now, here's a thank you to everyone who wanted to see this episode. And also, a big thanks to our researchers and research associates who support us through Patreon and YouTube memberships, and whose back and forth really helped me in making this one work. Remember, you too can join in if you want to support the channel. And you will get some nice perks too, like seeing all of our creatures and videos ahead of time and helping mold them into shape. Or you can also like, subscribe, or write a comment telling me any type of creature you would like me to give the spec evil treatment in the show. Any of those really help the channel a lot. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.